Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of POA History Live. Tonight we're going to talk about Wooden Chew Ranch and Kitty Van Eyck. Our first episode we talked about a foal born in Exenia, Ohio. Our second episode we talked about a POA breeder and promoter from West Bonifle, Utah. Tonight we go to Plant City, Florida, home of the Van Eyck's and Wooden Chew Ranch. Thanks for joining us. The Van Eyck started in POAs in 1965. It was Roy and Kitty Van Eyck. Their children, Tina, Sherry, Chris, Tony, Antone, and Kim. They've also had many grandchildren that's ridden in POAs, especially Daryl Leslie. Uh, in 1966, Kitty Van Eyck helped form the Florida Club and was very instrumental in that. She also was the show secretary for the Florida Club from about 67 to 2000. Uh, she may have had a little help in there, but she was the driving force uh, of that club and of the Wooden Chew Ranch. Uh, the Wooden Chews became famous all over the country because of Kitty and her promotional efforts. Uh, the one thing she did over the years is her and her family would travel to Iowa to the International Promotional Breed Sale and over the years lots of mares were brought back to Iowa over 40 some mares and that helped the gene pool in Florida and helped out the entire POA uh, with all the genetics that came from all over the country and that was purchased and brought back to her home state of Florida. This is the cover from December 80, 1980. Uh, this is Kim, Antone, and Daryl Leslie, and this is Rocket Tim, one of their gildings. I believe they made him a supreme champion. Um, this is going to be our backdrop tonight, so when I put a bunch of pictures up, I do want to thank Antone Van Eyck for sending me a whole bunch of pictures. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to do this episode tonight, so thanks to him and his family for tuning in tonight. I know a lot of them are watching. Here's one of those cool photos right here, pictures. It's the sign of the Wooden Chew Ranch, hung in Plant City, Florida, Roy and Kitty Van Eyck. Their first sire was Wooden Chew's Mr. D, black with a big white blanket, big spots. He kind of got them started. He was their foundation, basically. Uh, he wasn't very big. Here's a picture of him. I believe he was 49 and some inches. A good example of an early POA though. Here he is again. He was a son of Coretz Comanche who was number 149. So you know we're talking a uh, long time ago. Small registration numbers. And then this guy right here is Wooden Chew's Milkshake. We have a lot of pictures of him. He was an early, early influence on uh, their program as well. There's a photo of Milkshake. Here's a photo of Roy with some of the kids and milkshake. Usually Kitty was busy is what I'm finding out and behind the scenes and Roy was holding some of these but like I say before Kitty was really the driving force nothing against Roy uh, but she was the equestrian of the family. Here's Wooden Shoes Milkshake. He produced the Wooden Shoes Soda Pop, Florida's first bred and raised premier sire. Another early wooden shoes is wooden shoes popcorn. Early POA. The Van Eyck's attended their first international show in 1974. It was the one in Sedalia, Missouri. Here's a picture of that. You have Tony and Polly G. A lot of old timers will remember Polly G. And then Antone and Kim riding double on wooden shoes dandy. And I believe they have the Florida flags there, probably in the grand entry. That was their first international show experience, 1974. Here's an ad from 1980. It's two of the Van Eyck, the younger Van Eyck children, Antone and Kimberly. And then Daryl Leslie. And Amy was just born that year, it looks like. Here's Wooden Chew's Cactus Juice. 
He's supreme champion. Held the record for most wins at one international show. I believe that may still stand. That was 12 wins at the 1980 international show in Syracuse, New York. And Daryl was riding cactus juice at the time. And here's a list of the wins. I'm not going to read them off, but 12 classes at the international show, all in eight and under, of course. As the 70s came to a close, the Van Eyck's purchased another stallion. Brought him from the sale, I believe, Santee Hancock Bars. The Santee Hancock Bars, of course, was bred by Gene Carr. That's before his Tough Plot It program. He was uh, hard to beat, APHC on the bottom, and Lannan Series Super Spot on the top side. Here's another ad. Kim with Red Snapper, he became a supreme champion. Here's Wooden Shoes Cactus Juice once again. And here's Daryl with Wooden Shoes uh, Christmas, dressed as a zebra. Here's a little better picture of Santee Hancock bars. He made a good impact on Wooden Shoe POAs. A lot of the POAs from the 80s that came from Plant City were sired by Santee Hancock bars. They've raised many supreme champions over the years. One of them is Wooden Chew Sam Pepe, 1980 stallion. Here's a beautiful picture of him. He was on the inside back cover of the POA magazine in February 1985. Of course, how we do things at POA History Live, we like a lot of photos and we like to dig deep. Antone sure helped me out this week for this episode. Here is Sam Pepe with his rider Amanda Banal Phillips. Here's Sam Pepe, I believe is a late yearling. And then of course, you gotta show the baby pictures. There he is as a baby with his mama. Wouldn't choose Sam Pepe. To replace Santee Hancock, they found Van Eyck's found double investment. He's by Doc's Tough Cookie and Doc's Barbell. Uh, Doc's Barbell is the daughter of Tip's Polecat and GR's Mini Bar, a 1969 own granddaughter of Three Bars. Uh, she was sired by a quarter horse day, and that was a son of Three Bars. He made a good contribution to Van Eyck's, to the wooden shoes. Uh, here's another colt that they kept. We'll see some baby pictures as him as well. Wooden Shoes Cut and Class. I like that name. His mother's name was Wooden Shoes Cute and Classy. So they just kind of changed the name a little bit, cut it up, and got Cut and Class. And he was a Hancock Bar's son. Here's some colored photos of Double Investment and some of his foals. Here's Double Investment up here. Here's Wooden Shoes cut in class as a baby. A sign of a good breeder is when they retain their own fillies for broodmares. If you believe in your breeding program, you will retain your fillies if you can. And Kitty did that a lot. She retained a lot of the fillies and turned them into broodmares. This is a picture of quite a few mares that they had over the years. Here's some more wooden shoes. Hank's finale, cut in class again. Here's another mare, WPF Pepper Dot, an older brood mare. Wendy Pep, and of course, wooden shoes, Sugar Babe. I remember wooden shoes, Skip Bright Angel. She was a very pretty mare. There she is with Antone. Up here is wooden shoes, Skip and Tough. AKA Woody, we'll be seeing another picture of him later, and wouldn't choose Double Trouble. Here's some more. Here's Double Investment with the Sun Wouldn't Choose Double Dragon, Wouldn't Choose Gold and Ember, Wouldn't Choose Rough and Tough, and Wouldn't Choose 007. A lot, most of these went on to have riding careers. One of the most famous stallions to come from the Wooden Shoes program is this guy right here. It looks like he's a yearling in this picture. Wooden Shoes Silver and Gold. 
Silver and gold was purchased by the pony farm where he remained his whole life. Uh, he made a big impact at the pony farm. I think Stars and Stripes, Genuine Wit, Wrist, several of the socials, that's one of their prefixes. Uh, he sired several socials that went on to do things, but he had a positive impact for the pony farm, and that's Wooden Shoes, Silver and Gold. Got some more babies here. Here's Sam Peppy again, who became a Supreme Champion. Miss Peppy, Golden Lace, Golden Nugget. The one thing you got with the wooden shoe POAs is you just always got a durable, well-minded POA. You know, they may not have been the, the big blockbuster sometimes, but they were always there. You know, and they're just good quality POAs, and that's what Kitty did. She produced a, a solid POA. Here's one from the earlier program, Wooden Shoes Mudslinger. Here's Wooden Shoes Cute and Classy that we mentioned earlier, and this would be her granddaughter by Wooden Shoes Cut and Class. Wooden Shoes Dixie Doll, and then here's Golden Halo. Wooden Shoes produced four or five Supreme Champions over the years. You had Cactus Juice, Popsicle, Sam Peppy, Tough Taboo, and I believe Wooden Shoes Golden Nugget was also a Supreme Champion. Here's just some more shots from the farm. A lot of these pictures, most of these pictures were never published. So it's kind of cool to see them tonight on POA History Live. If you're just joining in, we're at POA History Live. We're talking about Wooden Chew Ranch, the Van Eyck family from Plant City, Florida. Here's Wooden Chew's Double Dragon. We seen him earlier as a baby. Picture leading horse in Florida's high school rodeo circuit, according to this. I'm sorry, I don't know that girl's name. Here is Wooden Shoes Skip and Tough. We seen him earlier as a baby. Pretty POA right there. Winning at the Indi Indiana State Fair. Very tough state fair. And that's Miranda Graham Coley with Wooden Shoes Skip and Tough. Here we have Wooden Shoes Dutch Doll. Over the years, quite a few of the Wooden Shoes placed in the Futurity. Select Sire for Charity, the Van Eyck's traveled to Iowa every year towards the end. It was Antone and his mother Kitty that you'd see in Des Moines at the sale. Again, this is Wooden Shoes Dutch Doll. She was ridden by Tom Morris. And there's a picture of the two of them. They made a pretty good team. It's a pretty classy POA right there, Wooden Shoes Dutch Doll. Here's another cover photo. I'm making these videos a little quicker now instead of an hour, 45 minutes, uh, just so they're easier to watch and my equipment will hold up for now. Trying to keep them down to 15, 20 minutes. Hopefully I didn't rush you. Uh, you know, like I say, Kitty Van Eyck brought in a lot of good bloodlines into the POAs and just genetics. And um, if it wasn't for her, the Florida club probably wouldn't have developed nearly the way it did. So all her kids were well mounted. Of course, Antone stayed in it breeding. He still has some POAs at his place. Uh, I'm not sure if I have a picture of his stallion, but he has a leopard stallion right now, real well bred. Oz of Sweet Speculations in the background. Uh, Ricochet Bounce BK Stetson, I believe is his name. And I apologize, I don't have a picture. Uh, but he's a pretty good looking leopard stay and so he still has a lot of animals on his farm uh, Antone and still involved in POAs. So here's the cover from the October 1979 Magazine again. This is Kimberly Daryl cactus juice and over here is Antone So just a good POA family. They were in it for a long time uh, Kitty was the driving force of it and uh, like I say, a lot of wooden shoes. I imagine there was over probably 125 wooden shoes registered. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of POA History Live. This was episode three. I want to thank the Van Eyck family again, Antone, for providing me so much information and pictures. Uh, next week we will be talking about Goldenrod Pony Farm, which is the GRs. If you've had any GRs, POAs, or GRs in the background, they own Siri Chief for a time. It's the Keith Stone and Ray Morris families from Iowa. 
So next week we'll be going to Iowa to talk about goldenrod ponies. Thanks again for tuning in tonight for episode three of POA History Live. We had a good time talking about Wooden Chew Ranch. See you next week.